Hello! Welcome to the Polyglot Files. My name is Michael and today we're doing another episode of... Languages of the World! Now I've had the topic for today's video in my back pocket pretty much since the beginning of the Languages of the World series. And I'm not gonna lie, I've been a little bit intimidated by this country only because there are so many languages that are spoken natively here. In fact, Papua New Guinea is home to 832 native languages, according to Prime Minister Sir Michael Somare, making it the country with the most spoken languages in the world. Now to be clear, and I'm gonna get this out of the way now, there is no way that I'm going to be able to talk about all 832 languages in one video. However, I did want to point out though that just because I'm talking about certain languages and not other ones, it doesn't mean that the languages I don't talk about are any less important. All right, without further ado, let's begin. Papua New Guinea is home to four official languages. These include English, Tok Pisin, Hiri Matu, and Papua New Guinea Sign Language. While English is an official language, the CAA World Factbook reports that it is only spoken by around 2% of the population. Further, Papua New Guinea Sign Language is the latest language to be identified as an official language by the Papua New Guinea government, and this was done in 2015. It was originally brought to Papua New Guinea as Australian Sign Language, but after significant influence from Tok Pisin, a spoken language, Papua New Guinea Sign Language was deemed to be only 50% mutually intelligible with Australian Sign Language by the time of its recognition. Speaking of mutual intelligibility, Tok Pisin, the third official language of Papua New Guinea, is actually a Creole language based on the English language. Most likely, Tok Pisin started off as a pidgin, or a simplified version of the English language used by traders and merchants to communicate with each other across many different languages language communities. Next, that pigeon began to be taught to children as they were born and grew up, and the pigeon eventually developed into a creole, a mixture of sorts between the English pigeon of previous generations as well as other indigenous languages in Papua New Guinea. Today, Tok Pisin is spoken by 4 million people in Papua New Guinea, or 50% of the population, and it is seen as a lingua franca in the country. So, since Tok Pisin is technically a creole of the English language, I wanted to figure out how much of Tok Pisin was similar to English. Let's look at a couple example sentences from the University of Hawaii. The first example of a Tok Pisin sentence is, Me walk now. And this translates to, I'm working now. Obviously, there is a huge similarity between two of the words, now, meaning now, and walk meaning work. Also, we can see that I'm is actually me, which is pretty much the indirect object form of I anyway. Our next sentence is Ben ibn walk azde, which means Ben worked yesterday. Again, we can see that similarity between the word walk and work. We also have the word been, which is showing the past tense. In fact, we know that been in English is the past tense of the verb to be, so that's not so different from English either. Lastly, e is a predicate marker that occurs for the third person subjects or noun subjects. In fact, it kind of reminds me of he, as if the speaker was saying, Ben, he worked yesterday. Our third and final sentence reads as one pela ticket long Port Moresby, please, which means one ticket to Port Moresby, please. The suffix pela is added to numbers and adjectives, so if we take it away in this case, we are left with just the word one, which means one. Further, we know that the word ticket looks a lot like ticket, and then please looks a lot like the English word please. Aside from the obvious influence of English on Tok Pisin, there is also considerable influence from the German language. For example, Tok Pisin uses the word beten to mean to pray, as well as Haus to mean get out, both of which are German words. Further, you can even see the Portuguese influence on Tok Pisin. 
For example, the Tokpisin word sabe means to know, which is from the Portuguese word saber. Speaking of Creoles like Tokpisin, and before we return to the other official language of Papua New Guinea, I wanted to talk about a language called Unser Deutsch, which is the only known Creole of the German language spoken in the world, and it's spoken here in Papua New Guinea. Well, not here, because I'm not in Papua New Guinea, but you know what I mean. It's spoken also in Papua New Guinea. I'm going to stop. Let's look at some examples. In dieser Sorte Seite viele Dings are nicht gesprochen von. In this sort of time, many things are not spoken about. In my opinion, it just looks like badly written German. I don't mean that to be offensive. I just mean that that would be the way that I would write German as a second language speaker, because I don't always write German properly. Anyway, the similarities between Standard German and Unser Deutsch spoken in Papua New Guinea are enormous. However, today there are only about 100 speakers of Unser Deutsch living in Papua New Guinea. Moving on to our final official language of Papua New Guinea, Hiri Motu is a language spoken by about 120,000 speakers. Hiri Motu is a simplified version of the Motu language, itself an Austronesian language. Hiri Motu has only 5 vowel sounds and 14 consonant sounds, giving it a rather small sound inventory of only 19 sounds. Before Tokpisin, Hiri Motu was the lingua franca of Papua New Guinea during colonization, and this was due in part to the need for the colonizers to be able to communicate with people from diverse language backgrounds for trade and agriculture. However, since then, Tokpisin has taken over the role of lingua franca, arguably due to the fact that Tokpisin is very close to English, another prominent language throughout the world. In fact, as I hinted to earlier in this video, the need for a lingua franca in a post-colonial Papua New Guinea was great, and this is due to the fact that outside of the four official languages, 45% of the population speak one of the other 828 native languages to Papua New Guinea. Of the 828 non-official languages spoken in Papua New Guinea, almost three quarters of them are classified as Papuan languages. These languages arrived with the first waves of human settlers to Papua New Guinea 40,000 years ago. However, these languages do not share a single common ancestor. Instead, they are a collection of unrelated languages under the umbrella of Papuan languages that could be potentially broken down into about 60 language families as well as language isolates. The most spoken of the Papuan languages include Enga, a language spoken by between 165,000 and 230,000 people, as well as Western Dani, a language spoken by about 180,000 people. One thing that is common among most Papuan languages is that they tend to have only five vowels. These are typically known as the pure vowel sounds of E, A, A, O, and U. Further, some Papuan languages lack the F and the S consonants, and some of these languages use tone as a distinguishing feature, reminiscent of the Chinese languages. Speaking of Chinese languages... Unlike the Papuan languages, Austronesian languages arrived in Papua New Guinea much later, around 3,500 years ago. They are postulated to have come to Papua New Guinea from Taiwan. Just take a moment, think about it, observe this map. The Austronesian languages originated in Taiwan and spread to Papua New Guinea 3,500 years ago. In fact, I first read about this in the Economist article that I used for parts of the Papua New Guinea research, and I had to look at several other sources because I just didn't believe that this was a thing, but it turns out that this is real. In fact, all the Austronesian languages that we have today supposedly originated in Taiwan. <laughs> According to the University of Washington, as well as many other universities, of the 10 language families that are part of the Austronesian language family, nine of them 
are native to Taiwan. This is due to the population growth that happened on Taiwan when people decided to migrate out of the island to nearby Philippines, Indonesia, and eventually Papua New Guinea around 6,000 years ago. More interestingly, these same people reached Madagascar in the year 500 AD and then reached New Zealand around 1280 AD. I think I can die happy today. I just, that is something that honestly, I just had, I didn't know. Didn't know that. That's just, I'm done. I'm gonna just, bye guys, the channel's over. I'm back. I need to answer one final question. How did Papua New Guinea become the country with the most native languages spoken within its borders? Well, there's one major hypothesis. Due to Papua New Guinea's intense terrain and volatile environment of mountains, swamps, jungles, and oceans, many inhabitants are isolated and separated from one another, limiting language spread and contact and preserving languages that would otherwise go extinct. Because of this, we see incredible language diversity, much of which has not been studied to a deep level. However, with the rise and spread of Tok Pisin as the growing lingua franca of Papua New Guinea, Many languages are endangered and face extinction. This has been another episode of Languages of the World. Before you go, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, don't forget to check me out on social media. I have a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As usual, thank you for watching the Polyglot Files, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!